If you hate getting lobbed, then you've clicked on exactly the right video. I'm about to reveal the number one footwork pattern that leaves tennis players exposed. Doesn't matter if you're a singles player or a doubles player. If you come up to the net and you hate having the ball come over the top of you for a winner or just too tough to be able to hit a good overhead, then we're gonna break down exactly what that happens. So this is a clip from a professional practice. By the way, if you know who this is, can you let me know in the comments, please? I'm pretty sure it's a double specialist, but I'm not 100% sure. He's coming up close to the net and a partner, a training partner over on the other side is feeding. And then we have another player right here. So it's two on one and they're playing this out. So watch it in here. Let me give you a, a look at this player's um, face. I think after this practice, yeah, here we go. Uh, so do you know who this is? Can you let me know, please? If you know who this is in the comments down below. All right, so here's the situation. This player's coming up into I, I wouldn't even say the middle of the service box. He's closer to the net <clears throat> than he is to the service line, which is a, a very easy place to practice volleys and a very difficult place to practice overheads because there's a tremendous amount of space back here behind this player, even for a professional player. And let, let's just get this out of, the, out of the way, right out of the gates. These are professional athletes, right? World-class athletes, taller than us, faster than us, more agile than us, more explosive than us, but we can still learn from how they move their bodies specifically. What are the movement patterns that leads to, along with like the natural you know, talent that they have, a huge amount of range. So let's check that out. This player's about to get lobbed, and uh, spoiler, it's gonna be a winner lob. So in other words, it, it's gonna be perfect. And I want you to track this player's feet. Okay, here's move number one. <clears throat> this player is going to unweight a little bit, hop a little bit, so both feet are going to come off the court. And move number one is a full turn to the side. He's unweighting his left foot to be able to pivot. And now watch his right foot make a full drop past his left foot. In other words, if we draw a, a straight line, that's not a straight line. If we draw a straight line from the net across his lead foot, his front foot, Look at, uh, this is really critical, th this specific point here. He's not just turning sideways, his back foot, his right foot has gone past his front foot. So he's made more than a 90 degree pivot or turn with his stance and that gets his hips to a full 90 degrees and now he's in a position where he can, he can athletically on the next step push past the first step and cross over. This is the key right here. And this is very similar here, here in America. It's, it's NFL season, it's American football season. And if you watch a lot of American football, you're familiar with this idea of a three-step drop where the quarterback receives the ball and then uses a three-step drop to produce some distance, some space between himself and the offensive and, and defensive line up in front of him. This is the same type of pattern. Please watch it one more time. <clears throat> Move number one is to lift and start to pivot and turn. He unweights both feet, he turns his front foot at an angle, and now his back foot is gonna drop back past his front foot. That leaves room to make this next step. This is essentially, this is essentially step number two. And then step number three is to uncross and push back into a long stride back. So in three moves, he's gone from closer to the net to the, than the service line to almost all the way back to the service line. And now here's you know where kind of the raw talent comes into play. He's gonna plant on that back foot and use a, a scissor kick jump here. And so, and he's actually gonna pull his racket back because he thinks this ball is going out. I don't know for sure. I think he, he probably could have actually hit this ball but he lets it go because he thinks it's going out and it ends up landing on the baseline. Look at where he, and of course, again, professional athlete, I get that, but let's learn from the pattern. And I'm gonna show you a real life pattern of a normal tennis player in a second. So move one is the initial pivot. And let's call this step number one with the foot going back. Step number two is the crossover. And now step number three is this final kind of leaping full, don't take small steps, folks. 
big, long steps, athletic, powerful, explosive strides is how you're going to cover the most court possible when you're put in a difficult spot. And so with three steps, he makes it all the way back into the middle of no man's land and probably could have covered this perfect lob that lands on the baseline. Okay, so now let's contrast that. And hopefully you, you never... Hopefully you never receive any of these uh, contrasts as clowning you know, on a regular player or like making fun of them or degrade, degrading them or anything like that. It's critical to look at the contrast so we can learn because most tennis players have some variation of where, what we're about to look at. So this, this is not to make fun of this player. This is just to look at the contrast. And now if you can meet somewhere, if you can fall somewhere halfway in between, you will likely be dramatically more athletic than the average person and cover dramatically more uh, space and courts. So uh, here's the situation here. I was working with this player and I wanted to evaluate exactly what we're talking about, her ability to move back and cover labs. This is a double specialist. So very close to the same position here, closer to the net than to the service line. And this ball is not going to be landing close to the baseline. It's going to be landing somewhere about here, a little bit past the service line. So here's the difference. When this ball goes up into the air, watch the difference in, in move. First of all, that front foot never unweights and it never pivots. So that means that this foot is going to have a hard time making a very big move. And th this is the extent of the first move. So we, we've only shifted one foot back about three or four inches. And now there isn't any room for the left foot to go past the right foot. The right foot has not come around far enough to clear the way for a big crossover and that three-step drop kind of move. So, so here's, here's step number one. One step, and we've only covered a couple inches. Here comes step number two. It, ca it can't be a crossover step. All she can do is move as far as the first foot moved because there isn't the clearance to be able to cross over. So we've made two steps and we've only moved about four inches. Now here's step number three. So that, that's how many steps the professional player made and it put him all the way into the middle of no man's land. And this everyday player, again, this is totally normal. This is what you're generally going to see when you watch tennis has only, let's see, where, where did she start? Um, she started from, so here's right foot, here's left foot, here's the starting position. Here's step one, here's step two, here's step three, and we've now made it back about a foot. This is how far we've made it in three steps. And that's how many steps it took the professional player to make it all the way back into the middle of no man's land. But she's still gonna try to hit this ball, so here comes step number four. It can only go as far as the right foot because again, there's not enough room to cross over. Here's step number five. Here's step number six. And there's the ball bouncing, landing back. Oh, maybe it's a little, oh, where is it landing? Yeah, oh, no, it's a little bit further than I thought. It's about two or three feet past the, the service line. But big lesson here is it took her six steps to move this far. She made it back about three or four feet. Compared to huge difference in pattern here, step one clears the way for the front foot. Step two, we're crossing instead of taking these little shuffle step steps. Step three, all a huge long step all the way back. And then he leaves the court and he's got all this dynamic energy and movement and that propels him all the way into the middle of no man's land. So with three steps, he's probably made it three or four times further than the everyday player. Is part of this his height and his stride and his explosiveness, of course, of course that's part of it. But I, I'm drawing a, a very you know, distinct contrast here just so that you can see the, the difference. I would call these like the shuffle steps, right? And the human body is not very explosive. It's, it's never very good at moving in a backwards direction. Notice, look at how her hips are facing towards the net, maybe about 45 degrees or so. So we, we've never established a full pivot. We've never established a full turn 
And that's what leads to these small, choppy, little steps and what leads to very, very low court coverage. And so from this position for everyday players, everyday players can only realistically cover back to about the service line, which means we have all of no man's land is fully exposed. All of no man's land is just open target space for our, so of course you're gonna get lobbed. If all you can do is move back to the service line, we've got another 18 feet, over three meters, between the service line and the baseline, that's just open and exposed and free to hit into because our pattern isn't athletic enough, of course you're gonna get lobbed. And of course it's frequently going to be successful and of course you're gonna feel stranded and kind of exposed up at the net. So work on this. I would highly recommend you go out to the court and just one step at a time, work through the pattern that we saw from this professional player it will dramatically transform how much court you're able to cover. Hope this is a huge help. Thanks so much for watching. Keep up the great work on your game. I'll talk to you again soon.